What a thriller this one is, guys. This is my first Double Trouble podcast. I've only ever done it one-on-one, but today I have the pleasure of sitting down with Ash and Kyra from TK Studio in Melbourne, and they are just this girly, um, happy, like their branding is so well done that whenever you're scrolling, you know it's their posts. And I think they have started something from the ground up. Literally, they they built this salon from a building that was not a salon, did the design, did everything, got the Instagram going. They walk us through all the business stuff. So going to council and costs and fit outs and all kinds of things, how long it took getting employees. And yeah, I think it's really interesting. I really wanted to know too, how it works with having two people because some of that's four, if you're watching on YouTube, I've put too many fingers up, but something that can be hard is you finally go from being an employee, working for someone, you've got all these ideas and go and work for yourself, but you're doing it with someone else. So is it really yours? And I think they break it down so well saying that you really need that person if it's the right person and that you can collaborate and that's how better ideas come and I think they're just so real and I was really excited I've watched from the beginning I I knew them before they opened the salon and to see them do it I felt always like you know you're cheering them on in the background so to be able to actually sit down and talk to them was really exciting for me and I know a lot of people would be interested in how you go from working and being an employee to fully owning your own business and doing it that way. So this is a cool episode, a lot of numbers and business talk, but I really enjoyed it. So Ash and Kyra from TK Studio. Okay, today I am sitting down with Double Trouble. I've never done a double interview (laughs) before, but I have Ash and Kyra from TK Studio, which is so exciting. I wasn't sure how we were going to work out three people, but you've really just nailed it. Yeah. (laughs) I love it. Where are you guys? Are you at the salon? Yeah, just upstairs. Oh, cool. Love it. Well, you guys, I have just been gagging to talk to. And I feel like (laughs) when you did a live recently talking about the build, I mean, we're all in in this situation. So doing the lives has been something that I have found really nice being able to talk to people and just still get in the hair space of it. So you guys doing the live, I was like, they're talking about all the things I want to ask them about. I'm like, maybe if they're getting it out there, then they're willing to share. So I was like, I had to slide into your DMs and see if you would chat all things business and build. And because you guys own your own salon here in Melbourne. And yeah, I just really want to pick your brains. Yeah. And I think that sort of thing inspired us to talk about it too, because coming from um, obviously working for someone else for a long time, no one really talks about opening and how hard it is or like where to start and what to do. So um, yeah, we just thought we may as well share it. So yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that you're like, oh, I'm just just a hairdresser. I'm I'm not going to know anything about how to get an accountant or how to set up a booking system or how to get a product line or how to build an actual salon because you did that, that (laughs) all of those things can be overwhelming and deterring. So I thought if I can create a platform to show as many avenues of what you can do in hairdressing and that you can do it for yourself and you don't have to have these corporate backgrounds and university backgrounds and that there's more than one person normally doing it with you. You're not on your own and you guys are perfect example of that of being the two of you and having each other so what I would love to just start and where I kind of go with everyone is asking how like did you always want to be a hairdresser how did you get into hairdressing and then we'll dive into everything else just a little about you both I love I love knowing if people always (laughs) wanted to be hairdressers or what the vibe was yeah cool okay okay So I never wanted to be a hairdresser ever. Um, I think I did like the work experience. Is that, did, did you call year it that? Work yeah, year yeah. 10 work experience in a hair salon. And I thought it was awful. I was like, the girls are bitchy, you have to sweep hair, fog foil, like awful. And then I think it was just finding the right environment. I was just getting my hair done in the salon when I was finishing up year 12. And they were like, what, 
what are you doing afterwards? I'm like, I don't know. And they said, do you want a job? And I said, sure, because I didn't know what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. But, um, <laughs> but I'd then, like some money. <laughs> yeah. so. I could use a bit of a paycheck. <laughs> So, yeah, I just did it. But um, I ended up falling in love with it. But I think it was definitely the environment. Um, I think I just had gone to a, a place and been scarred that thought it was like a quite a bitchy side to it and that sort of thing. And I wanted to avoid that coming from high school and, and that sort of thing. So I think that's always been important to us that, yeah, everyone feel like it's a little family and, and um, the culture is huge. And that's what I love about hairdressing as well. It's all awesome people you get to meet and, yeah, even this stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Ash, give me your goss. <laughs> um, yeah, I was the same. I never wanted to do hair, um, but I was politely asked to leave school, so I had to make a choice. <laughs> um, did I want She's to She's always be... been the cool girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, I basically sat on the couch for like, I think, two or three weeks until my mum was like, you can't do this, you have to get a job. <laughs> um, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and um, she more so asked me just like what I found that I'd be slightly interested in. And I actually said hairdressing because I considered it a very cop out job. I thought it was um, yep. just go do hair if you can't do anything else because like yep. it's the you don't need anything else. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I think it was almost the opposite of what Clara said, like I was put into it, I was very lucky in the salon that I was put into um, because they did um, magazine shoots and like all the competitions and they were very well known um, in Perth, which is where I'm originally from. So I was very lucky because I got to see that you don't just, you don't have to just sweep hair and like do day to day salon stuff. Like I saw a really cool side of it too, yeah. which really interested me. Um, and I did definitely wasn't naturally skilled at it. And so I'm the type of person that, like, I think if I suck at something, I want to try even harder because I want to be good. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, that just sort of, I don't know, it just ended up, I definitely didn't love it to start with, but I think the more I got to know all the different avenues of hair and that just... Yeah, I think the environment of hairdressing salons too is really, like can be amazing. So totally, yeah, I, think that was I used to lucky. love arriving at work. Like I couldn't wait, and it's so bad. I used to like I couldn't wait for my lunch break because I knew that I could hang out in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> when I came from at home we had 150 employees so it was like the back room was like the party place like you wanted to you coordinated your lunch break and like you know it is this like unique work environment that is so fun and yeah I think what you said is so important that you went into it being like oh it's just what you do if you don't do anything else and I really am trying to you know it's not on my own but break down those barriers and show people that if there is a anything that you want to do in this industry you can and that it isn't just this fallback career and yeah 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 i think what you said as well about if you want to do something i was the same i'm like if i'm going to do hairdressing i want to like be the best that you could possibly be at it because yeah. it was that that you were like a lot of people could get into it and do it but doing it well and as you said like going down a different avenue there's just so much that you can do so yeah, yeah and did right. you both envision yourselves being salon owners at one point or when did that kind of happen yeah. for you like that's never something I've thought of but then I hear people who like you guys are yeah. I talk to a lot of yeah. people who are like oh god I would never want to own a salon hairdressers are so annoying and then now look at you both so when did that change and how did that change um I don't know I think it's like a natural progression for anyone either like maybe you do dream about it or you just get to a point where I think like from working for other people, you always want to like try and like make the environment better and like try and help everyone Can to I make the it? whole thing better. But at the end of the day, like it's not your business. So you have no control over it. And if they don't want to do something, then that's, that's it. And that was, I think like finally, I think after years and years of yeah. like banging your head against a wall with some employers and things like that, you're like, well, if I want it done a way that I want to do it, you have to do it yourself. Otherwise, you just have to be an employee, which is fine too. But just yeah, to each his own. Everybody has a different goal and a different um, 
definition of success and what they, I think I've learned a lot of, along the way is sometimes I'm too opinionated or like I have too many ideas to work for someone sometimes and I'm like, oh, you need to be, you know, those things can be hard, but yeah. How did you then decide to do it together? Because I think something that I've always wondered, like when I see you guys, I'm like, oh, could I go in with one of my girlfriends? Because part of the idea of why you'd come up with your own salon is so that you can have your own ideas and that you don't have to maybe compromise on certain things like that. Did you find that that happened a bit with you guys or you were always on the same page that it was easy, it made sense to go in together? Because yeah, I think that would be a thought where I'm like, oh, if I'm going to do it, I feel like I need to just do it myself so that everything can be the way I want it. I don't um, think you yeah. necessarily have to agree 100%. I think, I think that's a good thing about it. Is yeah. We don't always agree on things because yeah. it's good because we'll see it in, from different a different ways. perspective. And I think that balances it out. And we are so alike in so many ways and then so different in others. Um, and in business, it just works perfectly because we both enjoy different parts of it and aspects of it. And then they're the things that I hate that Ash loves and vice versa. So um, I, I think it's so good doing it with someone because it's so helpful and it can be lonely. Um, I remember people saying that, like when you're the boss, it does get a bit lonely because you, even though you've got all these employees and stuff, you're the one at the end of the day that takes like all of the, the brunt of everything. Yeah, whereas you two um, can split the load. Yeah. You've got someone that you can bounce off of and be like, yeah, that was shit. Or like, we're going to learn from that um, and do it together. So, so cool. I, I do it together. <laughs> yeah. I think that what, in terms of like answering your question of like how we got to it, um, I guess like so Kyra and I did work together for three years, I think it was. And like, like I was saying before, you know, you didn't have control over certain things and like we'd always be trying to push for the same things. So, uh, so you were aligned like, in that time. We were, yeah, we always like had. sort of, yeah, as employees, we wanted it to run a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's maybe where it stemmed from because we were like, why don't salons do it like that? Or like, and you're, you're who, talking who with your you friends. Who can you work for that does it like that? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. cool. We always cared about the, the same thing. So I was like, she's a hair dog and so am I. And like, <laughs> yeah. we messaging each other at like strange times of the night being like, check out this hair video. And I was like, finally, I've met like my hair nerd. <laughs> That's so funny. My partner's always like, how the, I can't do his accent for the life of me. He was like, how the hell are you still watching hair videos? It's one yeah. o'clock in the morning. I'm like, shut up. I need to hear this. Like, it's just an obsession, isn't it? And it's like, if you don't, yeah. if you're not eating, yeah. don't get it. He's like, you've talked yeah. to people all day about hair. You taught a class yeah. all day. And now you're finally on the couch. <laughs> and your moment of relaxing is watching a hair video. I'm like, oh, look at yeah, that. Yeah, people don't understand. <laughs> yeah, and you, you just mean, get lost in them. You can watch them for so long. And then oh you're like, just constantly like sending them to each other. <laughs> what about yeah. this one? What about this one? I think that was one thing as well that we were... Um, we always found funny and we're constantly told that we needed to get more hobbies by mm. employers. And we were just like so horrified by it because we're like, this is our hobby. Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, what could I possibly I need to do that. other than this? Yeah, well, what else did I need to do in life? But that's why I feel like we're so lucky that we do enjoy it. And not a lot of people understand how much you can enjoy your job as well. Mm. And, it's, and it's hard for people to, to grasp that. Yeah. But I knew that we were just both on the same wavelength. And because we knew each other from work as well, it wasn't, mm. um, you know, as scary from like a friendship point of view because we knew that we were friends, but we were first time had our, the same work values. Yeah, that's so cool. So how did you go about coming up with an idea? Like, were you just starting to brainstorm and be like, this is it? Like, I want to go through all of it. Like, how do you pick a location? <laughs> Should you, do you wish you picked somewhere that was already a salon so that you didn't have to dig your two inches deeper or whatever you were talking about with the sinks because that seems like an issue and like kind of maybe walk us through the beginning from the birth of the idea to actually getting to where you are with it yeah um well it started with um just I'm pretty sure it was me that sent you the mezzanine place I sent Kyra a ridiculous 
beautifully looking warehouse that was huge. It was like, like 600 square meters. It was very big um, and I send it to her one day and I must have not been having a very good week at work and I send it to her and I was like how cool would this be as a hair salon and then she was like I can't tell if you're being serious <laughs> and then I think it must have just from then on we just actually started looking at um commercial real estate and then we went did you get a real estate agent for that or do you just look yeah. yourselves no and i think it's like you know the sponsored ads that pop up like once you start searching <laughs> yeah into it, they'll just constantly like popping up and you'd be like don't anyone look at my phone yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like, um yeah it did just start as a joke and then we we're both like are you serious i don't know are you and then we went from there but i think definitely it's a huge part of it is where you find a spot um for us it was really important the area we wanted to feel like our clientele was around it um and yeah i think that's really important where people are going to come from to get to you um yeah, yeah that was the main thing yeah and so, so we just start like looking a, at places that are renting like say i'm walking down chapel street and there's a place that's available it says for lease you just started mm -hmm. kind of contacting and then from stuff that was coming up and you were just looking for a lease to take over yeah, for sure. Yeah. We would drive past places and I'd like whip out my phone and take photos as you're driving past and send it. And mm -hmm. we, that was probably the longest thing that we did was looking for a, a building. Um, okay. And as you mentioned before about a pre-existing salon, I think that's each to their own as well. For us, um, I just feel like we were starting afresh and really wanted to disconnect from everything yeah. and start our own, our own brand and I just think sometimes with another salon it might come along with other things as well uh, fair enough like a clientele base or anything yeah. like that that you wanted it to be your own that makes sense yeah. so how but, did you start um, you go yeah sorry I mean I just mean like in terms of it being a little bit easier for people if they want to go into that you're going to have all of your permits set up it's already registered to be a hair salon like um, the plumbing yeah, there, all the fixtures are there and you can just sort of gut it and start it. So for a cheaper um, sort of idea, you could definitely go down that path, but it's just what you're wanting to do in terms of your business setup. And did you know that ahead of time? Did you know that that would be cheaper or you didn't kind of know about the cost either way? You were just doing what you thought? Like in hindsight, do you wish you'd done it like that maybe or not? We, we did we get told it'd it. be cheaper, yeah. and easier, but we were just brats. We yeah. were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest part, I think the hardest thing, especially in Melbourne, is finding um, like anywhere that's pre-existing that has good natural light. Yes. That was like our biggest thing was like that we found, obviously with the big boom of social media and like where we worked in the past, to try and find somewhere in the salon that had good lighting was sometimes always just impossible. Yeah. Um, and we had, um, we also have makeup as a part of the business. And so that's like a huge thing for them as well and their clients. So we just, that was hard because I, I find maybe it's just the way that um, the old buildings are built, but they are quite narrow and long. And so it did, that take, took us longer. Um, but yeah, Kyra's um, husband is, a tradie of everything. So we we're very ah, lucky. You've got yourself um, one of those guys. And so he definitely told us that of finding a hair salon, um, a pre existing one would be cheaper. And um, we wouldn't have taken on this building if it wasn't for him because okay. he, he found it. it was, he saw something that we didn't necessarily <laughs> see. All we saw was basically, well, I know, all I saw was like the where we're sitting right now upstairs is beautiful and it had a big window, holes in walls that he said could turn into windows. So I think we were just like, well, the light's here and it's big for us to grow, um, but we we're very lucky to have him to help us. That's so cool. I don't think we ever would have taken it otherwise. Yeah, we probably <laughs> maybe would have started it a little smaller, but yeah. <laughs> um, like it's two story. It's got another room upstairs. Um, yeah, it's quite a big building. I think it's just under 200 square and then I've got a courtyard and, and stuff, but it's kind of all in different parts. So we just sort of renovated it as we went. We got in downstairs and then while we were downstairs, we renovated the upstairs. So you could still um, be generating a profit or having yeah. some, or, or having income coming in yeah. to help you then yeah. do that. That's cool. Yeah. 
So, I mean, they were full on, like, it feels like a lot longer, yeah. but then also really quick. But we, it was probably about a year from when we first started looking at this place to when we actually got in and opened. Wow. Um, so how, walk us maybe really, through that. Like, had you been just saving for, like, if you knew, because obviously you were employed, so it's like maybe you were getting a paycheck or had you resigned and then you had a year off or you'd saved or how do you kind of as a hairdresser or somebody <laughs> like budget for that or did you not? And you're like, I just have a lot of loans now. Like, yeah. what's the situation? Well, I guess like realistically at the end of the day, and this is what I think is the hardest thing is that um, people do want to move on sometimes and either to another employer or to open their own and financially first of all you're not going to get a loan from a bank if you've got no job and secondly you, you need the income so I know like it's kind of like yeah, I think that's I the biggest that. deterrent for people is that like they don't want to get in trouble or they don't want to like and it is a awful feeling like you know your phone's ringing and you know that it's like either a yeah. real estate agent or someone you're like can't talk right now I'm at work but at the end of the day you just have to do what's right for you and yeah we definitely just started saving as soon as we knew that this was what we wanted idea. to do and it yeah. is true like what are you realistically supposed to do and at the end of the day you're working for someone who did the same thing and who had to start exactly. somewhere too so it can yeah. be awkward and it can be hard and I get it is a bit of a I don't know, uncomfortable or like, you know, situation, but yeah, okay, you have to do what makes you happy. Yeah. And I think it's really common now. Like, um, I know we are really close still with Jay Edwards and he always says that it's like the most flattering, like compliment that someone goes on to do their own salon. They're not going to work anywhere else. Like they've reached the top yeah. and then they've gone and you've taught them enough for them to be able to have the skill set to go and do that yeah I think um, that's really important I, yeah like we we've both spoken with our employers and um yeah wanted we've always treated everywhere that we work like our own and wanted to just sort of take it to that next level and knew that that wasn't for us so we'll just go and do it on our own so yeah. I think it's not for everyone because it is it's hard work but if you're the kind of person that yeah, he's last to leave, first in, like mm -hmm. you're always doing, you know, extra shoots and, and competitions and all of that stuff and it is, it is your life, then you just have that personality naturally to be like, all right, cool, what's next, what's next? Yes. Yeah. So for us, it wasn't as hard from that side of it, but it is, it's a lot of work. Like we were doing huge hour weeks plus trying to build the salon still, plus working another job. So yeah, it's, it's big, but it's so worth it. And yeah. I think we've been told this so many times that like, it's the hardest and most rewarding thing you'll ever yeah. do. But I don't think we've actually understood that sentence. So yeah. much until, like, were there times recently? when you were like, oh God, why didn't I just go to a rented chair kind of? Or you just like, yeah. what? But that it happened? is, like, I still get that, yeah, awesome feeling like when you open the door and you're like, we, we made this, like, this is fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's epic. So how did you go about, cause I know you guys talked about council and stuff. So what does that even mean? Like what, what happens there? So you've gone in, you've got the real estate agent, you've signed the lease. This is ours. Now we can do whatever we want to it. Right. And then what happens? Yeah, that's, that's what you think. And then yeah. <laughs> I guess like the biggest thing is just sometimes you need permits for things and, um, especially if you're wanting to rip down walls and things like that. Um, also depending on your landlord, like yeah. what they'll allow you to do. Yeah, Ooh, because you, you don't own like, the building. You're still yeah, renting yeah, it from yeah. someone who's allowing you to make it into a salon. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's still maybe their house or something, you know, yeah. that they might want yeah, to come exactly. back to. And, and there's also restrictions, especially because like Melbourne is so old that you're more, more than likely to get a heritage building. So there's massive restrictions with that too. But you can go online and check what is against the building before you sign a lease, which mm -hmm. we'd probably recommend doing that. You can look up the, the building and just see what's been done to it previously and how much it's been rented out for before. Like there's quite a lot that you can find out or if you have a real estate friend that can find out some extra sneaky information. Yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to check out maybe the council stuff beforehand um, before you get into the building because yeah. that's going to 
be a lot harder once you've signed that lease. And, and then, are those yeah, fees as of- well included in that? Like, oh, you can do this, but you have to pay. And that's where yeah, it shocks exactly. you. Or it was like, oh no, you can't change this into a hair salon. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's, I don't know if they usually turn you down, but you definitely have to pay to apply for a permit no matter what it is. And then we had to get like a surveyor out. So we had to pay for the survey to give the plans to the council for council approved. So it's just like a draftsman as well who had to actually draw the plans for the surveyor. And it was just. (laughs) And how did you find it? Like, how did you know that you had to do this stuff? It's just kind of like once you start, it snowballs and you end up find like. Yeah. They all tell you. The more people you next to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why we love doing this and love we're pretty open when anyone messages us about anything, we'll give them the answers. And not that we're trying to deter anyone in any way. It's just that we wish that someone had had Well, that's kind of exactly told what I wanted to have this well. conversation for. Like what do you <laughs> yeah. wish you knew before? What do you wish someone yeah. told you or you know, that you could have yeah. changed that saved you the time or the money or the mistake or anything like that? Yeah, and I think we were quite lucky with our real estate um, in terms of because the building was in quite bad shape when we got it. So we had the more you can use negotiating power for your lease, the better. So like I was saying, don't you don't want to be signing a lease before you've one hundred percent checked that you can actually do what you want to the building. And if you can't, or if you have to apply for a permit, then use that as yeah. like be like well I can't use the building it's not like for this so for me to apply for it it's going to be this so give me free rent or something like that yeah, and, yeah. you know yeah you either that way. negotiate that they cop the fees of the fit out um and all of these council fees um but then they would have control on the on the fit out do, yeah. and, and what you do within the building or you do it yourself um and they offer you a rent free period but okay, we cool. were never great negotiators in life. <laughs> so that's something we've definitely learned along the way. Um, and now we have no problems just being like, well, can you give us a better deal? And I'm yeah. just like, I hear myself saying it. I'm like, but, you know, but like, it's true. I am, I'm that person. I'm the one being yeah. like, I'm not paying $5 more for the high speed internet. I'm stuck at home. You should be accommodating me. Like, you know, I, I'm that person. So that's yeah, funny to know. That. Yeah, we were like, we'll pay you double, like, just to avoid yeah. all of this awkwardness. But I think, um, yeah, we spent lots of time, like, actually going into the council. Um, I found that that's a better way to get things done, is that we used to just sit there and be like, we're not leaving until you talk to us. Yeah. If you go on the phone, they'll just put you on to loads of people. So, um, but I feel also the more questions that you ask, the more things that you can open up. So you're best to just sort of... Um, what is it? I think ask like for, it's ask forgiveness. for um, forgiveness, not permission. Yeah, and that's probably the biggest lesson we've learned with council is because the more you get into I think it. you because the idea is you'd think that the council is there because they want to make everything safe and great and good for all the buildings. And you think that like doing the right thing that they would be supportive of that. But I actually think that they just want to catch you out in things that you're trying to do that aren't right. So they they ask you sneaky questions to try and get different answers from you. And then they'll be like, but you just said blah, blah, blah. Like about what? About putting in your sinks and being like, oh no, you can't have sinks or like. Yeah, like anything, especially like nowadays with disabled access and things like that can really trigger things. And then they're like, oh, but you can't do that because it's a heritage building, but then also you have to have it. So it's like. You're just better off not actually speaking to them at all. I think just as long as yeah. your salon, like the building you can do hair or whatever it is that you're wanting to do, as long as that part is yeah. done, yeah. I would avoid And then <laughs> just before you open, you get like a health and safety sort of check. So they come through and they check that you've got all of like your smoke alarms and sprinklers and emergency lights. We didn't know what they were. So like if the building goes down, they're all still showing. But just like your safety. I do know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're like what are those cute little lights there yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's not gonna like, work for our safety. lighting yeah. <laughs> yeah that side of things you definitely do that and you do have to call them and get them in before you open but um, to be honest like when that lady came in she was awesome fine. like she, yeah. she, she wasn't really happy like, and you have common sense too like you know that you're not gonna wash your color bowls in the same sink that you wash the dishes in yeah like you know yeah. like it's yeah. just normal things that you would 
yeah you would do anyway yeah, yeah. Cool. So then how did you start going? Is there like salon shops like and coming up with the design? Like I think your branding and I want to get into that too, but your branding and your vision for the salon is so obvious that it's you, it's yours. And when you look on the Instagram and all of that, like how were you able to then take that vision and put it to life and the cost of all of that? That's good to know. Yes. Um, <laughs> I guess maybe we talk about the budget side of things from yeah. the beginning because um, that was a big eye-opener for us because um, I guess like a big question people ask is like how much money did you know you needed to have um, and I think we more so started with like well how much can we get? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you feel obviously being three of us from the beginning so we were like well how much will we have from all three of us what can we what do we know that we can all say for or have or if you're on your own like what do I know that I can um, loan or anything like that and then kind of work backwards from there with either your accountant or um, my stepdad is an accountant so he helped us out a bit from oh, the cool. beginning so it's and not like, like you need an accountant who specifically works for hairdressers or salons or something. It's just any accountant can do this for you. Yeah. And I feel like you'd best to go with someone's personality that you click with than like just go yeah. from skill level. Cause I feel like yeah. you need to be on the same page and someone that you can just call up and be like, Hey, what do I do here? Um, Cause that would that be that a really confusing part of that. Yeah. Like, you never have yeah. had to really do that before and then to dive yeah. into it and also have other people's wages and things that yeah. you Yeah, and it's do. something you don't wanna you don't wanna mess up. Like when you've got the ATO and like super and all of that kind of thing, you wanna make sure you've got that right from the beginning. So that's definitely a good investment that you need to put in your budget. We, we would recommend um, like bookkeeper and accountant as um, yeah, when you open, you wanna put as much time and energy into bringing the clients in and doing some some hairs we're, we're good at. So like yeah. stick to your strength. <laughs> yeah, and I think you can always um, come back to it too. Like yeah. Kyra and I are doing that now. Like we mm -hmm. let it, it back over. yeah, to kind of gone back over that. But at the beginning you are so, just your hundred percent, everything needs to go into your clients and making sure that you still got people that want to come in and know where you are and all that sort of thing. So it is definitely like, I would recommend allowing a little bit extra for a bookkeeper and an accountant just for the beginning. So you yeah. can work, they'll tell you how things work and yeah, they explain things to you. They're not just like, they don't just take over and do it, which yeah. is like what I always just thought, that's what they would do because they get yeah. paid for it but they they do tell you like how to do things and like how much money you should have in the bank at all times and what you should allow for and things like that so I think budget wise we just started writing we just started sourcing what we needed like what was the average price for like a basin chair and how many yeah. are we going to need and then how many chairs are we going to have and like how much are our chairs and it sounds like really basic, but I feel like that's just where But that's start not, it's not. Out. Like, it sounds like it is, but it's because like you there's so many start. things that you need to know. It's not mm -hmm. like you just need to be like, okay, how many chairs do I need? How do I need a counter? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, there's so many other things, but that's what's really cool about what you just said, that the bookkeeper is going to teach you if you have the right one or something, they're going to teach you how to do it so you can do it yourself. And I think something what you learn is what you learn along the way you know like you don't have to know it all I'm quite diligent no, like no. that but I would feel like yeah. oh, I have to have a course on this and I'd have to have done all my yeah. research and watched all these videos and you know yeah. but you do figure it out as you go and I think having another 100%. Helpful. yeah and knowing that no one knows what the hell they're doing yeah. Like, <laughs> you think that everyone did before they got into it, but everyone's just winging it and seeing what happens. And I think that was amazing. Everyone's like, we didn't have a business coach. Like we've, you know, we've made some mistakes, but we've learned from them. And I think you don't just take on board what someone says until you've lived through it. So now we're like, okay, we won't do that again. Yeah. But we did, we did have help from a designer. Um, okay, she's cool. From us. Um, so she helped us more just like spatially put everything in because it's really hard as creative brains as well to visualize it. And they're like, you know, this is going to be this many millimeters away. And we're like, yeah. she just gave us our full 3D computer walkthrough of being like, this is what it'll look like. And oh, we're like, cool. oh, now I get it. 
Yeah. And, and had you gone like to her with like a vision board, like you'd made something with like all your pinks and all, you know, whatever, or? We had a Pinterest page, but, yeah. was, but it was very <laughs> random. Like it wasn't, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was quite random. Like sometimes it looked industrial and then the next minute it wasn't. So and I think that's why we knew we needed help because yeah. there was three of us. We all yeah. like, you know, have got a bit of a clue, but it was nice for someone to just come in and be like, this is what's going to be cool. It'll last one guy. It was, you know, just put all of our ideas in one. And then there wasn't one person feeling like, oh, my idea didn't get heard or anything Yeah, like well, that. that's what I was saying and before. Yeah, like, I feel it. like you have this moment of, I'm finally doing it myself, but you're not fully. So I think that that is a good point, that if you have a designer, they can take what you both like and put it into one kind of Yeah, company. and they can work with your budget as well. So we told her that we didn't have a ginormous budget, so you can choose different packages. Like ours was just we wanted the concept, and then we'd source everything ourselves, and we changed okay. a lot of what she said, but she pretty much just told us what best way to get as many chairs and, and, and not be um, squishy and, and just like look really, really pretty as well. Mm. And then we sort of just sourced everything from price point after that. Yeah, and she just kind of found like a few pieces that she was like, I really like this at the moment, like you should check this out. Um, and it was more, it was, I think she helped us mainly with like the big things. Like she, she was the one that said, your cabinetry, like if that's really nice and pretty and pristine, like it's a big part of the salon, which like personally, I would never would have really thought that. Now I'm like, oh yeah, it makes sense. But yeah. before yeah. I would have been like, just put some shelves up. But yeah, it yeah, does yeah. make such a difference. So we chose to invest in the permanent things like our front desk and the cabinetry um, to all look, you know, spend a little bit extra on that and then when we can the stuff. Yeah. And we've changed stuff as we've gone. Like we've mm. got things in there, like our colour table, we've changed that, we've changed over our chairs. So as we've sort of started to get into it and, and make a bit more and we've invested back into the business again. So, so cool. you can still open it up and just have your main things. And then, yeah, once you get into it, you can always... I think that's I think the that's, hard... You go. Yeah. yeah. You go. I was going to say, like, I think that's actually the hardest part about it is, um, like, I, I don't know, I've, I think I'm a bit better now, maybe not. But I feel like um, at the beginning, I was like, it's not ready. Like, I want everything to be, like, completely perfect and done. But at the end of the day... <laughs> Like, you do just need to get in it because once you start working, you don't know how, if your chairs are too close yeah. and like, until yeah, you don't you're know using how it's going to totally. work until you're in it and you're living it and then you're like, yeah, this was a bad idea. Why did we do this? Like, we used to have big floor length mirrors, which looked beautiful, but clients kept kicking them and like making these big bang noises and like, they look great, but they're not Practical. ideal. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a lot of feedback where people come back and be like, oh, like these mirrors are so much. So we ended up changing them. But yeah, you don't notice until you're working in that space. Um, and, and same with the staff as well. Like if they have any input of things that they think would work better or like make their environment better, then we always take that on board too. That's so nice. So speaking of staff, yeah. that can be an interesting one too. Like how did you go about getting staff like did you open just the two of you and you were going to operate as yourselves and then people started applying or did you know you needed staff from the beginning but also if you just have put a lot of money out how do you then have money to be paying people is what I'm kind of I've thought all the time like how can I pay yeah. someone I can't pay myself or, I, you know, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah well I think that's something that needs to be in your budget from the beginning as well yeah. like how you're going to go about it do you want to set it up for staff or do you want to be the one putting in all of the hours um so for us we got peanuts and then worked our little tushes off so we were in here like every hour of every day pretty much we did six Almost days year, from yeah 10 to 9 yeah. um and then wow. all the other stuff doing on the other day so for us we did it that way um i don't know if there's a right or wrong way but we invested more in the fit out of the salon than putting that into staff straight away but yeah. also we wanted to really make sure the brand was what we wanted when we opened um and making sure that it was we were the faces of that and we'd set sort of the culture before we introduced people yeah. And we were still figuring out what the hell we were doing. We kept thinking yeah. someone was going to come in and be like, can you leave? Like, what did you think you were doing? We kind of like, we the business. Yeah. That's so, funny. Yeah. And talking yeah, about I branding, think... like how 
did that happen? Like, did, are you, cause I know Ash, you do the social media, correct? Uh, yeah. And is that something that you were always good at? Did you take a course? Cause I think, yeah, it's very well branded. You can, I always know when you're, when I'm scrolling and it's your stuff and, and coming up with a culture to get stuff in, like, how do you, how do you go about all of that? Oh, like, I think sitting here now, it's like, oh, we have great staff, but we definitely made some mistakes mm. along okay. the way with hiring and, um, think always you know. trust your gut. Yeah. <laughs> People tell you that and you're like, oh, but you know, we, and we never thought we would rush into anything and we never did rush into any staff members. But, um, I think being a small team, you know, pretty soon on if someone's not the right fit. Yeah. Um, and and you kind of have got to learn that along the way as well. Um, but I think the branding started with the front desk because it was pink marble yeah. that was sourced from our designer. And then Ash is just like run with it and done such a great job. She basically just gave us like a, did we have a sample of that? Oh, just a photo. Yeah. We had either a photo or a sample. And she was like, go check out this marble. Like, I really like it. I think it'd be great for us front desk. Um, and we all went to that random factory where they had the yeah. big slabs and it was so like in the middle of nowhere with these slabs in there and like you had to like wait outside while they like geared up and then you like went in and had to look at it and, you're, and then we saw it and we're like cool we'll just take a photo of this and um, everything all the pink sort of stemmed from that. Okay, that was the cool. first image, image on the Instagram which yeah, is like a close-up of the marble yeah. Um, so I think it was sort of none of us liked pink. Because no, I was going to say, <laughs> like it doesn't it doesn't fully strike me as your vibe right away. <laughs> How did this it's happen? Nothing. It's like me picking yeah. pink too. Like I've never worn pink a day in my life. I wear black every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we were just like, I don't know, we we'd worked for a lot of male bosses and been in that environment yeah. where we wanted to make things cute and girly. So we were just like, let's make it as girly as we possibly could. But it's not really either of our personalities. Well, no, I'm girly as an ash, but we, <laughs> Yeah, I think it was just, um, and it was two years, two years ago. Was it two years ago? I think we opened. Um, yeah. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Like at the time, there wasn't a lot of pink going around. So we yeah. were like, oh, that's cool. That's different. Um, yeah, and we just loved the the marble and we just kind of ran with it. So that's sort of how it stemmed from that. So that's why I think a designer is good because it's kind of their job to look at what's coming in and what's like happening next with trends and things like that. So they'll, if you're unsure on like a colour palette or things like that, they can really help steer you in a direction that is a bit different and so that you're not copying other people directly as well because we were always a bit mindful of that too like we don't want to be Looks exactly like, like other stealing people. somebody else's ideas or yeah. yeah 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 and as much as you can uh, we would recommend doing custom because that was one mm. thing that we found mm. like we were open books from the beginning and told everyone where we got everything and that kind of bit us in the butt a little bit with some pop-up salons that were like oh that looks a lot like ours yeah <laughs> I, re I remember <laughs> seeing like, something on Instagram <laughs> about that too like how, do you it's like so, it's, it's not so like you can get it trademarked right like what yeah. do you no. yeah. yeah and it is at the end of the day it's a compliment but it was just yeah you put so much time and energy into sourcing stuff that um yeah I, I would recommend that maybe that you do custom stuff like our color tables custom made and, and our mirrors were and that sort of thing so yeah, yeah just starting from that but in terms of your social media how do you think of all that stuff you, um, you beat it off the it just comes to you because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm always looking at being like that's so cute how did you think of that <laughs> I think your stories are really good you're good at putting like the right little like gift thing in the right place. Uh, yeah, the I spend ninety percent of my time finding new gifts. Um, <laughs> it's like my joy in life. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know. We just. I mean, in terms of like you asked if we didn't done any courses, then um, like especially over lockdown, yeah, I've been trying to learn more. Um, yeah. And now that I've got more time, um, yeah, totally. but I just spend a lot of unhealthy time on social media <laughs> um, but I really enjoy it yeah 
Fallon as well. She would run the social media, tried to mm. get them yeah. into the social media a bit more. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and when we opened, um, your partner at the time mm. is big in social media, so he helped us a lot with some stuff at the beginning as well. Yeah. And do yeah, you feel like that was a really important thing for attracting new clients to your salon or did a lot of your clients follow you anyway? Or was that something that really helped? Cause you seem to have a lot of followers right off the bat and have, you know, that kind of social media backing you. Was that something that was important? or not? Um, I think that there's always I think this kind of almost answers the whole thing about employers taking people's social media. I think there's always going to be those clients that will track you down no matter where you go. Like, and they're not necessarily on social media. And I have like the world's hardest last name. So, oh my God. Do you know I specifically me. didn't say your last names? <laughs> I was going to text you yeah, and be like, can you see name... audio recording of your last name, please? <laughs> I'm just going to say Ashton Tyra. <laughs> so, you know, there's those clients that they're going to find you no matter where they, where you go. So, um, but then on the same, same token, like I think social media is everything. Um, the more you can, and we're big, massive believers in putting out what we want to come in. Yeah. Um, anyone that's looked at our socials, you don't see a lot of intense blondes, um, and yeah. things anything that we don't enjoy doing we just don't post it yeah um because it's just not who we are yeah why am i going to post that really great scalp lightener that i did and it looked great but i don't want that in my chair every day so <laughs> yeah. I, I exactly agree. and then if you love doing them post them all the time so yeah. Um, I think that was yeah. a huge, huge learning thing for me because obviously I've done the comp work and all of the crazy hairdos, but it, was, it didn't come natural to me. And it wasn't something like, even though it was a great experience, it wasn't something that I really enjoyed yeah. doing. I feel really lucky to have done that. But I actually just like beautiful hair. And I remember Ash was like, well, stop wasting that stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. But we, we were um, asked by our last employees, I know Ash had to give her Instagram account back. Um, oh. and then I, I wiped, wiped mine as well. So, would would um, you do that now with yourself? Why do you think that that's something that employee employers do? Like at the end of the day to me, I'm like, isn't it my work? I did that hair. I took that photo. It doesn't have your name. Why is that? Or do you agree? And you're like, yeah, we would do that for our staff too, because of this. I'm more, pers it's still something that I think is a case by case situation. I think when it comes to contracts, employers want to put it in there for worst case scenario so that they okay. can say, well, you signed this contract, so there you go. Yeah. I was more than happy to hand mine over um, because like I left on really good terms. Like personally, I just think like, you'll be able to just find them on. Like, it's yeah. not hard. Um, and but, was it a whole new brand as well, us starting? Like, you're yeah. still going to have photos that are in that salon? And I think... I think that's where, like, mm -hmm. it comes from. Like, personally, like, we take all our pictures at the front and TK's in the background. I, I guess that's that the difference of going else's. from being you guys and opening your own salon, whereas mm -hmm. I've, say, changed salons. Like, I'm still working mm -hmm. for someone... And I still, like the brand isn't maybe changing. It's still my yeah. vibe. So I get that that, that yeah. probably would be, if I was doing my own thing, I probably would want to do that too. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of them, if they've given you the Instagram from the beginning, like the girls have their own personal Instagram, but then we also started TK1 when they start here. So and even so if they have, so say I come to you and I have my own mm -hmm. Instagram, I have to yeah. make a TK1? Is that the the point of it or I would um, keep you don't have to but you'd have to wipe all your photos yeah and start again which is um, hard because we put so much time into exactly what you yeah, said spend yeah. all your time doing <laughs> that and yeah it's hard yeah. and and that's the thing like so a lot of the girls will still have their own one mm -hmm. and then they'll have a different one just because it's a completely different vibe and um, brand yeah, yeah and, and different branding and they they're constantly getting help with it and 
they can still be have a lot of their personality on there and that's the main thing as well we don't want it to be like culty that you have to have it a certain way but yeah. also um then when they come and go they've still got their other instagram um and hopefully they they're staying with us but they'll also yeah. you know have that as as their their look book but i also feel as an employee i was pretty happy to wipe mine because it was like a fresh start for me yeah um and to be honest as well, like I, I was doing a lot of clients really quickly in and out. And so I was able to spend a lot more time with people take better pictures yeah. um, and put more effort into them. So I was looking back at those photos being like, those like, don't even compare to what I'm doing now. Cause the only thing I've thought is like, say I left and in the background was my old salon or something people are still seeing it so maybe they're still like oh like I'm gonna go back there that's where she came like I'm still promoting your brand a little bit like is that good but yeah. I guess it goes so many ways it's so hard to control now yeah it? yeah and that's the thing I think it, it was so unclear that it wasn't in any contracts like it wasn't in my contract but that was just asked of me and I was the same like we ended up leaving on good terms and then yeah we've had um chats with them since and, and that yeah. sort of thing like, I was happy to do that um, cool. where I think it's in contracts now and it is something that's a lot clearer. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just like to, you're better off like learning now. I think you're better off putting worst case scenario in your contracts. And I yeah. think that's what scares people. But as long as like, if you're DMing clients telling them that they're, you're going somewhere else and then you hand over the account and they see that, like, they're going to be like, cool, I'm just so glad I took over this account. Like I got it yeah. back, but then like why that is, that is what employers are worried about. Cause it's just another way of instead that they of, can you know, find you. Yeah. 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 You know, when like the, the awkward thing of like, we've all left somewhere before and like your client's like, see you next time. And you're like, mm -hmm, I won't be here, but you can't say anything. Cause your employer's yeah. asking maybe not to. And so the same thing goes with, so, so I think that's where like social media kind of bridges that. So employers just want that protection to be like, well, you can't be going and DMing and, and yeah, finding yeah, them yeah. on there. But then personally, I think like if a client wants to find you, they will find you. Yeah. And they ended up <laughs> um, contacting us and being like, can we give out your email? Because there's so many of your diehard clients. Oh. So we just like, we can't make them happy and they are yours. Or that's so nice. Or come from a, a previous salon and that sort of mm. thing. So I think if you do the right thing, it'll always come back to you. We didn't contact any of our clients. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, it's kind of nice and that you're, it's a different environment. They might not like it here either or like yeah. your new salon when you're working. So um, you might create even better clients or, yeah. you know, more of a, a different style as you've changed as well since then. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's another thing too is that, like, um, depending on where you work, but a lot of the time, like, those clients, if they haven't followed you from one to the other, but if yeah. you've gotten that client from that salon, they might just want to go to that salon. That's exactly, so, exactly you know what I, I mean? said. Like, yeah. And especially in this day and age, like, you know, some people just go there for the selfie at the end because they want yep. to be seen there. And that's totally fine. And then they won't, come, they won't follow you. So yep. I think like at the end of the day, like there's enough clients for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. That there's no need to be nasty about it because at the end of the day, like I'm sure clients came to us and were like, this place is so chill. Like we wanted it chilled. And like, for those that don't know, we do all of our stuff one-on-one. -on -one. So we, when yeah. we've kind of done that from the beginning, like we see them from the beginning to the end. Some clients probably don't like that. They maybe like to talk to the apprentice and talk yeah, to all and these have different, different people, people and they like the hustle really and like. bustle and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And they might come here and be like, this place is boring as hell. But yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you've like, come from busy, enough. chaotic places. That's always what I've been in. Like I said, my salon before yeah. was 150 staff members in one building. Like it was hectic. So to go yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. Which you said, like, it's huge, it's fun, it's like, mm. but the older that you get as well, not the way old, but in hairdressing is, yeah. you, you kind of, you are oh, a bit really. older. It's just like, how much can my body um, also put up with this before it starts to break down and become a hunchback <laughs> with no risk? So it's like, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. you've got to kind of make that decision for your own body as well. Because, I mean, that's something that's not really taught in apprenticeships. Um, how to look after yourself. yourself and your mental health as well. And I think that's a huge thing as hairdressers that hopefully will be brought into the apprenticeship program. Yeah, I love it. And so as we kind of wrap up and get, you know, I think that we've covered a lot of things and yet I really appreciate how open you are with it, but are you so happy you did it? And when did, I want to know when you finally were like, 
yes, the money, like this is how, like, you know, was there a point where you started being like, this is more profitable or is it just the fact that you can do it yourself? You have your own space, your own place. And that gives you that happiness that it's kind of balanced in that way. Yeah, I mean, we're still only two years in and we've been closed for three months. So <laughs> I guess like in terms of, I think it's just nice to have your own place. Like yeah. I think we're just at that stage where it's just, we've got a really great team. It's nice just to, yeah, come yeah. and be like, we've created this and it's like where you want to be, um, which is why we want it to be open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think if you if you're wanting to do it, for the money side of it, which I think as an employee, you don't always see all of the behind the scenes. Yes. Um, and you can sort of bottle things up and become a little bit bitter and be like, well, why are you not here? And they're probably doing a billion other things for the salon. Yeah. But um, I think if it is for just profit, know that you're probably not going to get a return for at least two years. Yeah. Plus what you're going to do prior to that as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah and even longer if you're going to start with, more staff and yeah, yeah so just depending on on how quickly you want to build it but if it is just to like make some cashola then maybe go and rent a chair yeah <laughs> and that's what I had heard right? from Definitely. a lot of the other people you know that I've been talking yeah. to I'm talking to somebody who does rent or who does do a build and everybody yeah. who's done a build has said that like it's it's yeah. more that you can do it for yourself and it's you're in it for the long haul when you're doing it that way and yeah. it is so rewarding but yeah. that it does make you appreciate your previous employer and the hidden costs <laughs> yeah. of tax and super and all these things that you don't think about being paid into as an employer now. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Exactly. And it definitely is worth it every minute. Like there's no way I could go back to being an employee again yeah. after doing it. Um, and it's, it is definitely worth it. I know that we've like said a lot of things that I'm like, this is bad, this is bad. And like we genuinely... <laughs> Like now that yeah. we've got to here, I think the pandemic and sitting at home and not being able to do what we love was maybe a aha sort of moment being like, we did the right thing. Yeah, and it, it shows you that you cool love your thing. career when you're yeah. forced to be off and you can't wait to go back. Like yeah. people don't understand that I'm like, when can we go back? Like what day? Like, you know, yeah. I'm dying. Yeah. My situation is completely different to everybody else too. So I'm dying to go back for a bit of a yeah. paycheck. But you know, it's just, <laughs> yeah. it is crazy that, and I feel very fortunate and grateful that I am looking forward to going back and you guys would feel the same. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. But yeah. yeah, definitely worth every minute of it. But if it is for some fast money, then it's probably not the path. It's the long haul for it. Yeah. Better. Yeah, I think just having that time to reflect because we hadn't really stopped since we built and then opened, but just sort of hit the round, hit the ground running. Mm. So having this time to sit has yeah given you more time to reflect and know that it is pretty cool what we've done. But yeah. and even you asking us on this, it's like oh, like you want to know what we have to say? Yeah, yeah it's so funny. funny. <laughs> Yeah. and then you're kind of like oh yeah like it is cool what we've done but you don't realize that when you're in it just totally grinding. yeah because <laughs> it just becomes your day-to-day -day. it becomes normal for you now that's this is just yeah. what it is you know so yeah. I think yeah I really appreciate you guys taking the time I feel like we could talk about it forever but that, yeah. I just am really glad that yeah you were willing to do it and I've loved seeing it grow and seeing it be successful and seeing the energy that you're putting into the industry and the things that you guys talk about with mental health and it seems like you have this very loving environment with your team and you know all of those things that I think you're doing exactly what you set out to do which is quite powerful for us on the outside to be watching. Thank you. Thank it's you. nice to hear well, that. Yeah. I appreciate you doing this. I think it's yeah. so good putting out um, and bringing everyone together, which is how it should be, like everyone in any position, any salon that you're at. But just know that we had no idea what we were doing and we did it. Just like if you want to do it, just take the risk and go and do it. Love yeah, it. Perfect yeah. ending. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I really sense. enjoyed it. I think that was a, a plethora of knowledge. <laughs> Thanks so much Thank for asking you. us. Yeah, okay. Appreciate it.